Hi, this is Mike from We Build Stuff. This is the final build log video for a bar top arcade that uses a 28 inch screen. Follow along for the steps I use and see the process I take when building. Please check out the playlist link in the description. Like, subscribe, and share the videos to show support for this channel. The topics covered in part 6 of this series are adding the cooling fans, how to wire an IEC power switch, wiring the LED strip lighting, adding a switch for the lighting, cable management, screen protection, marquee artwork, and the final touches and overview for this project. So even though the arcade works, there's still a couple things I want to add to it. One of them is cooling. Because the arcade is pretty much fully enclosed, it needs some way for air to get in and cool down the electronic components that are inside. In this diagram, it gives you some suggestions of how to set it up if you're using a fully enclosed cabinet. I'm going to do something similar to this and just mount them to the back door to allow for air to come in and out and cool down mostly the screen. That's the one that's going to need it the most. The actual Raspberry Pi will need a little bit of cooling, but it's not going to overheat too badly. Cause now I'll just power. So here I'm just doing some quick math. I got to set it up and cut some round holes in the back of the door. I'm going to be using a jigsaw. Ideally, I should have been using a hole saw for this, but I didn't own one at the time of this build. But this is how to, again, show it with the tools that you have. I was in a bit of a rush. I probably should have gone a little bit slower when cutting, so my cuts weren't as smooth as they could be. But it is going to be at the back of the unit. You're not really going to see it. Next up is a hole for an IEC power switch. I probably should have done this before painting, but I forgot. Um, but it fits. Nobody's going to be able to tell the difference anyways. This is going to be supplying power to everything. Back to the fans. Uh, this is just mounting them. I probably should have used some longer screws to do so, but it works. It's not going to come apart. So these are just wired in via USB, and they have a small little power controller to change the speed of the fans. I'm probably just going to leave it on high. Next up, this is showing how to actually wire the IEC power socket or switch, whatever you want to call it. It has a 10 amp fuse, which should be enough to handle just about everything. I'm using 16 gauge wire for this, and I should have used some fully insulated quick connects, but these will do just fine for now. I'm going to wrap them up in electrical tape afterwards, so you're not really going to notice. I used a diagram that I found on Instructables to do this, and I will show a picture of that later. Before you cut your actual power bar, make sure it actually works. Test it out so you're not wasting all your time. Strip those just enough so that you can fit the quick connects over top. I had to do a little trim there. Crimp them on and let's start attaching it to the actual power socket. Now the first time I went to go and test this, I actually forgot to put the fuse in. It took me a while to figure out what I had done wrong. All right, pause the video if you need to for this part. So as I said earlier, I just wrapped some electrical tape to it just to prevent any connections from touching each other that shouldn't. We don't want to short circuit anything. This is good enough. It will work, but ideally you should use fully insulated connectors. A quick trip to Home Depot. These are what I should have used. These are female quick connectors and they're fully insulated, but my way will work as well. Okay, time to wire up these LEDs. I have a power brick and I have a switch and I want to put them all together to make them work. First thing is to figure out the polarity, which wires go where, switch them around. I'm not really worried about getting zapped because this is fairly low power. That works perfectly. And even though I tested that connector, I decided to just chop it off and splice it into the wires. That's a little bit easier. I'm going to connect these together using, again, little quick connectors, crimp them together. This is the way I used to do it when I used to wire car stereos. And the other way to do this is just solder it and wrap it with heat shrink. So for wiring up the switch itself, I just referred to the diagram that came with it. I just have to attach it to the correct tabs that are coming out pretty easy and I'll do that with the female quick connectors as well. Now I didn't really like these little uh, adapters to attach my LEDs to the wires. They were cheap. I thought they were a good deal when I got them but clearly I should have spent some more money on it. So just quickly adding my female 
quick connects to there and these will slide right into the back of the power switch. Plug in a power brick, there's my diagram, and let's plug them into the right way until they work. Perfect. Oh, wait. Almost. So these are the problem with that little uh, adapter. They are kind of finicky. I find they don't really grip the LED strip as well as I'd like, but they do work once you get them into the right place. Just don't jiggle them around. The adhesive that came with my LED strips was not the greatest. I ended up having to glue gun these in there, uh, but it is inside the cabinet. Nobody's going to see it, and it does function. So what, is it recording? Of course it is. you bring your voice? Yeah. Would you like mute it out? I'll have to now, won't I? Here's the one who said it. So the glue gun is not the prettiest, but it's going to be hidden behind everything. Ideally, I'd love to have just, you know, a single bar of lights that would just pop right in without having to do all this work. But for the price, this is just fine. I need to make a hole for the switch for the back of the cabinet. I'm going to be using two different size Forstner bits. You don't have to use Forstner, so you could use a spade bit or just have one big one in the back. It's up to you. I'm just going to pop those together nice and quick. It works. Pop on the nut. Tighten it up really awkwardly with these terrible needle nose pliers. Does it work? I see lights flashing. Fantastic. All right, now to actually get this whole thing wired together correctly, I'm gonna put the power bar that has been attached to my IEC socket in there. I could use screws, bolts, or in my case, hot glue gun. And I'm gonna be using these little cable timeouts to organize all the wires and the mess that's gonna be inside here. Now, since I took off the screen, it makes it a lot easier to do all this work. This is why I like to build my stuff modular. I like to be able to take things apart and make changes if I need to. It could probably look nicer and cleaner if I didn't have all these nuts and bolts sticking out everywhere, but this is just my style. Build it to suit your own. Now I know that there are special tools to cut plexiglass or plastic or whatever it is you got. However, I didn't feel like buying them and I just used what I had on hand. I was really careful and slow when using the circular saw and it worked pretty good. You can't really tell a difference. For this project, these again bolt on and off. It's going to line up with the same holes that are on that front screen piece. Maybe for another project, I'd like to actually have it slide in uh, and not be permanently attached like that. That way you can take it in and out, easy to clean. But for this project, I was under a bit of a time crunch and I did make it work. I also cut a piece for the artwork marquee as well and just hot glue gun that in. It holds it in place pretty nicely and I know it's going to work just fine. I will be changing this up for a future project, but it works. So yeah, extra fuses. I didn't have any of those when I first wired this up, so I think I had to wait two days and did some shopping to go get it. Definitely cheaper to buy them online than at a store. All right, let's see if it works. The light has turned on. The system has booted up. Fantastic. The lights, I may not always want to have them on and off, so that's why the switch is in there. You don't always be, want to be blinded. So here's a quick look inside the working cabinet. I've got all my power. I have the Raspberry Pi 3 with the USB encoders plugged in as well as the cooling fan and onto some artwork. I designed it in Photoshop just with some quick images and borrowed a printer to print them on. This only cost me about $10 to print the banner. A nice full color and I'm quite happy with that. To hold this in temporarily, I'm just going to be using tape. Uh, probably not the best way, but I was planning on switching out the banner later, so I wasn't too worried about a permanent solution. I should have used clear tape instead of the masking tape. The masking tape ended up creating a bit of a shadow from the LEDs behind it. So let's do a quick test fit and see how it all looks together. I really like this color scheme with the black and green. I think that looks really nice. So I thought I needed some more lights, so I pulled off another, basically two layers, and I'm going to attach those to the part that holds the speakers. 
I'm going to add some bullet connectors in there so I can take it apart and put it back together. Again, I like to do things modular. And this worked well for me. Again, the adhesive didn't stick very well, so I needed to use the hot glue gun to hold it onto my piece. Give it a little wipe before reapplying the artwork, and it should work. So this one I used clear tape. As far as I know, it's never come off. Reattach the speakers, get them working. I put my DIY labels on there, and they pretty much worked. Reattach the lighting, put the bolts in, and permanently attach everything together. I think this was the last time that I actually took it apart. So this project is pretty much done. I really enjoyed working on this. This was a fun way to start and actually you make a design completely from scratch. I based some of the shape off my previous builds, but it works. I'm happy with it. I really like playing on the larger screen. You can fit two people way more comfortably beside each other to play multiplayer games like this. <laughs> I do wish that I'd made the control panel a little bit deeper so that I could fit all the buttons on the top, but for the most part, I think it still looks very clean. So let's take a look at the inside of the cabinet. So player one hotkey, that matches here, and the player two hotkey, if you remember from the previous videos, is on the inside of the cabinet because I only use it for configuration. That's just the way Recobox works. So there's a little switch for the LED lighting. There's a switch for all the power. That's an IEC C14 if you're hunting for those on Amazon or eBay or wherever. I'm using intake and exhaust fans to cool and circulate the air through the unit. It has a little speed controller from, I think there's three speed settings. My power bar with only three things plugged in. There should be power going to the lights, to the Raspberry Pi, and to the TV screen. And the speakers are powered directly from the screen itself. So Raspberry Pi 3, not too bad. I moved on to using an Oldroid XU4 for another build, but this still plays just about any retro game you could need. Speakers are up there and hidden, easy to access, and my next arcade project video will be a full-size cabinet. I've already built it, I just need to edit the videos, so please stay tuned for that. Thank you again for watching these videos. Uh, they were a lot of fun to edit and actually make the whole project itself. I'm happy that it's finally done. I will probably make a couple videos in the future for how to actually program the Raspberry Pi or Odroid or whatever you're using. It's extremely easy. Check out Recallbox. Anyways, the plan links are in the description. Please send me messages, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Bye.